better than Chime it's the back here. And today I want to talk about Google Translate because there, there's really big news. Google Translate just added three indigenous languages, Zapotec, Yucateco, and Huasteca. Now what? Yes, it's true. And so this is historical. I never thought I would see this in my lifetime. Yes, they use AI. And it's really interesting because uh, before this, people were using like chat GPT to try to translate now what? And it was like just complete gibberish, you know? It just wasn't there yet. But Google, I mean, has the name of the technology behind it. And so they were able to make a translator that actually works. And so it's really amazing. A lot of people are asking me how to find it. Some people could not find it. If you go here to like the main Google Translate page, you're not going to find it. Uh, from what I understand, they're rolling it out in the next few days. And so maybe it'll be available here. If you can't find it here, try going to the actual website. That's worked for me on any browser that I use. So you can see here, I have now what Eastern West think of. That does not work for you. It definitely works on iOS. So if you have any Apple products, use Google Translate Apple products and you'll be fine. Okay, but if you don't see it, just look for it in a different place, wait a couple of days. So, I've been testing it out, and what I want to do is I want to just break down the benefits and the functions that are just not there yet. Okay, first and foremost, now Eastern Huasteca is spoken mostly in the state of Veracruz, and it's spoken by over a million people. Okay, so it it makes sense why. They added Huasteca Nahuatl instead of the other varieties because it has the most speakers. So it's the most vibrant living a variant that we have today. And so that is why. So I'm going to start with what I'm, I already know what people are going to be searching. Okay, so we're going to start with that. So first of all, people are going to be searching for names. Now what names? And they're also going to be searching for short phrases. Right? And they're also going to be searching for uh, translations of mostly of mostly uh, classical now what and words. This is what we're going to find. This is what people are going to do. And I know this because, you know, I'm a moderator in a, in a Nahuatl learning group. Uh, and that's what they do. They just ask for names, you know, translate this phrase. What does this word mean? Okay. So let's generally find, you know, it's not a, it's not a bad thing. The only problem is, that's not what this Google Translate is built for. Okay, this Google Translate is built for like conversational translations, like stuff you find in like uh when like you're conversating with somebody, right? And then the problem is like names, for example, like it was in one that was they got, they don't have now what names anymore. Okay, and so that's not a thing. So if I if I say, you know what, I want to find out, I want to name my cat Star Woman. This is what happens. This is not a name, right? Like, this is, this says Siwat Sidlali. This means a uh, woman star, woman star. But that's not how names were constructed in classical now one time. So you cannot use this to better understand classical now what. Okay. I mean, in some ways, it can help, but with names, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Watch. I'll put the feathered serpent. Feathered serpent. That's not Quetzalcoatl, is it? <laughs> uh, 
the smoking mirror. Look, that's not this kind of poca, right? <laughs> so you, you got to be careful. This is not going to help you with, you know, translating classical number words. It's not going to help you making names. Okay. That you kind of have to have a knowledge of classical noun, but, but this is not going to help with that. And people always say, oh, what if we want to translate Tescadipoca into English? What would happen then? Nothing. Nothing happens. Good to the club. What about that? No, nothing is translated. Okay, so it's not going to recognize a lot of the, the classical Nahuatl terms, but then we'll, it's not translated. The famous Omateo, it's not translated, right? And so there's, um, these are not going to translate. Now, if you want to translate something like my brother, Oh, sorry. I'm putting in English. Let me try. Uh, no, but you'll eat me. Let's see, so that does work. No, you'll eat me. That's my friend. No, you'll eat me. And then no, eat me. That's my brother. Okay, so now what? What's the kind of now words are gonna work? But classical now what words, a lot of them are not going to work because uh, that's not how now what functions today because. Like I said, there's not a lot of naming going on and so as a result, it's not gonna work for that. And so the other things that people try to do is they wanna translate like short phrases. I'm gonna use an example from Reddit. There's a, the subreddit, now what? There's a lot of people who say they're writing a book and they want their characters to have Nawa dialogue. And so they come up with these phrases like this. Somebody recently asked, how could I how could I translate this, right? A bloody rain makes the grass grow. Se atlen flawel totonic ichiwa ma moscalti no pashiwi. Okay. This is not an exact translation. If you're if you're trying to get a, a translation like this, the problem with it, the problem with a lot of like people wanting to translate short phrases like this is that it kind of you kind of have to know how Nawat is structured in order to type in a prompt that's gonna get you something legitimate, right? Like so let's see. Maybe a rain uh, with blood makes the grass grow. Maybe something like that. Yeah. So, seat ika esli ichiwa ma moskalti saka. So you see, this is probably a more natural way of saying it in Nahuatl than this. There's just certain phrases, certain ways of saying things in Spanish and English that don't translate well to Nahuatl. If you don't know that because you don't know Nahuatl, well, you're not going to know how to construct uh, a proper prompt, right? And so as a standalone, this is probably not the best tool for someone who's looking for names, short phrases, translations of words, especially classical Nahuatl words. You would have to kind of ask somebody just to make sure that what you're what what's been translated is actually correct. Okay, just just to double check because sometimes some of the translations are kind of iffy and straight up wrong. Let me show you a couple examples. My grandmother is here. Okay, now this is correct, actually. That's the other thing. If you do this repeatedly, you will find that the prompts will change. 
Maybe it's maybe it's the system getting better. Hopefully that's the case. But yesterday, when I tried this, when I wrote down this exact phrase, instead of uh instead of each stock right here, it actually said altok. So it said nonana altok nika. Now that's crazy because Altok is reserved for inanimate objects and my grandmother is definitely not inanimate, right? And so there are certain now what rules that we have to follow. This is all correct, by the way. No nana it's nika, no nana it's nika, no nana it's nika. These are very good translations. So maybe it's improving. I don't know, I'll keep looking and see if we can find a mistake. And these are the kinds of phrases that will work very, very well with this with this translator. You know, a lot of times people want to come up with like really like deep or philosophical kind of things, right? Uh, but probably just like general speech is probably going to work out the best. Let's try something like something a little more philosophical. I died before I was born. How about that? Right? So that's something that people would want to translate into that one. Nimiki kema aya nitlakati aya. Yeah, that's fine. Let's see. I. Love my wife and I love my children. Let's see. Niklasotla no siwa. One nikintlasotla no pilkone one. This is very, very, very good. So, I mean, it really depends on how you type the words, right? Notice how there's a J. This does not follow the Inali spelling because that's another thing I'll put you here. The Inali spelling is preferred by a lot of indigenous people today. Well, mostly, mostly the indigenous scholars, I noticed. Uh, this one right here is a little bit more common with like speakers, but maybe who don't are not scholars of the language, right? And so there's no there's no standard orthography, unfortunately. If I were to type this in Inali, this exact phrase, it would be this Nik La So La Sot La Siwa Wan Nikimi La La so la no one. That's what it would be like. Okay, so I don't remember what this is called. This is I don't remember what this orthography is called, but notice how what they're doing is they're kind of just interchanging the J and the H mostly. They use a lot of U's in place of W's. You can see that there. And that's Pretty much it. They they do use case, so that's good. Um, I mean, so it's not a terrible orthography. It's just not a, a in Ali. For those of you who are used to that, right? But I mean, it's not a huge shift. If they were going with like a C here and B B C, that would be a different story. But overall, not too bad. But just know that there's no in Ali spelling. One other thing that's important to know is my type. What is your name? This is really interesting because even though it's Eastern Huasteca, which is how it's spoken in Veracruz, 
there's actually different ways of pronouncing that K, depending on which community you're in. I have a teacher in one community who would pronounce this as Henahatsa, Henahatsa Motota, Henahatsa. Another one would pronounce it as Kenikatsa Motoka, Kenikatsa Motoka. So there is a little bit of variation in pronunciation. And so it looks like, where is your grandmother? Kenki. So some communities will say Kenki, Kanke, Kanke, Eltok. Ah, there it is. Look, they use Eltok. Ah, finally found an error. All right, this is the error I was telling you about before. Eltok is for inanimate objects. So if you want to say Kanke, Eltok, Moamosh, where is your book? That's fine, Eltok. You cannot use it for a grandmother. Grandmother has to be Eatstok. So this should actually be Kanke Eatstok Monana. And so that is an error. I told you that I think the machine had fixed the error, but I don't think so. It 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 did it correctly here, and then it did it did it incorrectly here. There is some speculation that maybe Spanish would be more accurate. Let's see if that's true. Donde esta tu abuela? No, it's still wrong. Okay. Some people think that it's translating from Huasteca directly to Spanish. But here, I don't see that. Let's keep going and see if we can find any other errors. I like to run. That's perfect. Nigneki ni motlalos. That's perfect. Very good. I have five cats. Oh, here's another error. This right here is fine. Nikipia Makwili, that's intelligible. But Chichime is actually dogs. This is dogs. So this is wrong. I don't know. Maybe I can send feedback. Um, I don't know what that will do, but yeah, this is definitely wrong. Chichime is dogs. Mitstonme. Mitstonme is cats. This should be Mitstonme. So again, this Google Translate, great for Huasteca Nahuatl students. Why? You have a teacher, you know, you could, you could, um, Type stuff in here and then ask the teacher, hey, is this correct, right? Like, if you have somebody to ask, like, that's legit, right? But if you don't have somebody to ask and you don't know now what, then you're going to get into some trouble at some point. As it is currently constructed. Hopefully it does improve. Let's keep going. I have two children. Okay, that's fine. I like to walk on grass. Nechpartia ni nemis y pansaka. That's very good. In Nahuatl, if Osteca Nahuatl, if you want to talk about something you'd like to do, you would always use a uh this is future tense. You'd always use future tense. So again. This is great for Huasteca Nahuatl students. Like I know, I've been studying Huasteca Nahuatl for over three years now, right? So I know a lot of Huasteca Nahuatl. So 
and I have teachers that I can ask questions to. Nishpaktiya means I like. Nenemis means I like to run. Ipan sakat uh, grass. So that's good. So so far so good. Only two errors. Let's try to do a more philosophical one again. In death, there exists. Oh. Ipan mikilisli onka tlachialisli. That's good. It's good. That works. Okay, so there, there are certain errors that it's making. Again, I'm typing a lot of stuff. It's only been two errors so far, so it's not like it's a ton of errors. Let's see how it does with animals and plants. I like to walk in the forest, in the park, and I like to play with jaguars every day. Okay, so Nineki, Nignemis, Ipan Quartitlamit, Ipan Parque, Juan Nechpatia, Nimbo Wilanas. Ika Hawares Mogosta. So if they don't have a word for the animal, looks like they're just gonna replace it with Spanish. Let's see if I change this to opossums. How about that? Opossums. Nope. All our raccoons. So below me, I don't know if that, I don't think that's the word for that actually. So below me. No. It's the word for vulture. So the animals, it doesn't look like the animals. By the way, most people use Quatitlan for forest, Quatitlan, but. I don't know, this might work as well. So the animals are kind of weird. Uh, what else can I use? And we know it knows dogs. Um, well, bobcats. No. So the animals are not very good. The tome, there you go. The tome, that works. Birds. Eagles. No. So it looks like the, the animals are not great. There is a distinction between wild animals and domestic animals. That might work, I don't know. Usually it's the guani for wild animals. Um, Probably it's not gonna know about airplane. I am on an airplane. Yeah. So it looks like there's a lot of nouns that are not gonna be in here. For the most part, the verbs are pretty solid. And possession is good, conjugation is good. Like if I say their names, in toka, that's good. In toka. So it conjugates very well. You love me. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people want to know how to say I love you. That works. Oh, look, they threw in some pronouns. You know, overall, this is very, uh, very natural now, actually, which is always a good thing. But now what is very natural. You know, and spoken now we don't use uh, pronouns too often, so that's you can use it here. I love you. What about um they love us? That's the sotla. 
yeah, that's what well, works great. And they even put a pronoun in one thing. So yeah, I mean, I think now it is very natural. A conjugation is very good, very strong, very accurate. And that's actually the hardest thing in now to to master and also the possession. Those are really difficult because there's a lot of prefixes that you can use and it looks like it's pretty solid there. So overall, if you want like natural sounding, now what? That's gonna work. Let's we'll see. I am 20 years old. So they're using a they're using a calc here, Spanish calc, via shoe. But this is how a lot of Nahuatl speakers would say. It. So I mean, in that sense, it's natural. I I have 20 years. What this says, I have 20 years. So if you think about it, it's like how you would say it in Spanish, right? Yo tengo 20 años. It's the same thing that's happening here. So overall, very useful for everyday kind of phrases. I tried some more philosophical ones, and those seem to work as well. The only drawbacks right now are names. Probably not going to be names. Probably not going to work very well with classical knowledge. So that's my review. I'm going to keep working with it. Maybe I'll do a part two. But yeah, so far so good. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't want to check any of the translations. Plus, come on, Timo, it doesn't.